Welcome to Misconceptions and Difficult Concepts in Chemistry. Today we will be touching on ionic equations. This is a killer for most students, but this is actually a really simple area. Before you understand, before you try to understand how to write ionic equations, you must first understand how to write normal chemical equations. So if you're unsure, please look through the video on writing chemical equations first. And the topic on ionic covalent metallic bonding and acid bases because all these different topics have different chemical equations which you will need to know how to write first before you can deduce how to write an ionic equation. So let's assume that you have a perfect grounding in, in writing chemical equations. So now let's touch on ionic equations. We have a few simple examples. Let's do the acid alkali one first. So how do you write an ionic equation? An ionic equation by its name implies that it is an equation involving ions okay so let's have a simple acid alkali reaction HCl plus NaOH acid and alkali gives us salt and water so in this case the salt is NaCl front takes the back back takes the front and my water is H2O so how do we convert this chemical equation into an ionic equation? First of all, we will first have to split everything up into ions. So how do we split something into an ion? So only if the substance is soluble in water, then can we split it into ions. HCl is soluble in water. I have H plus and Cl minus ions. NaOH is soluble in water. I have Na plus and OH minus ions. NaCl is soluble in water. I have Na plus and Cl minus ions. H2O is simply H2O. H2O is a covalent compound. It's a covalent molecule. Covalent compounds, you can't split them into ions because they are not made up of ions. Okay, it is not made up of ions, so you can't split it into ions, so we leave it as H2O. So these are two sides of the equation. So we cancel the same ions on both sides. So now what do we have? We have Cl which is the same and we have Na which is the same. Which at the end of the day Okay, let me rewrite this a bit first. At the end of the day, what do we have left? We have left with H plus, OH minus, and H2O. So we copy this into the next step. H plus, which is from HCl, plus OH minus, which is from NaOH, giving us H2O. So this is the ionic equation. So basically it represents the ions which are involved in the actual chemical reactions. All the rest of these ions here, they are not they're not technically involved in the chemical reaction and we call them spectator ions. Okay, spectator ions as in those spectators who sit about watching a game of sorts. So spectator ions, these are the true ions which are involved in the chemical reactions and they, are, they will be in the ionic equation. So let's take a look at another ionic equation for a little bit more practice. Let's have an acid metal reaction. And maybe let's say we have H2SO4 now for the acid versus HCl and magnesium. So an acid metal reaction will give us salt plus hydrogen gas. So the salt in this case would be magnesium sulfate and the H2 hydrogen gas. So this is step one of the this is step one of the equation. Step two will be to split this into ions. H2SO4, I have two H plus ions, because this is two here. One SO4, two minus. Notice two minus here versus one positive. That's why we need two of the H plus. Two of the H pluses. So two H plus, SO4, two minus. Magnesium is a metal, it can't split into ions. Magnesium sulfate is an ionic compound can be split into its ions, MgSO4, Mg2 plus SO4 2 minus, H2 is a covalent compound, it can't be split into ions. So metals and non-metals cannot be split into ions. 
So again, we cancel the like ions on both sides. Sulfate, sulfate, and what else? No, nothing else. And we write the ionic equation by copying the remaining ions. 2H plus plus Mg gives Mg2 plus plus H2. Okay, something which I didn't do in the first, which do in the earlier equation, is to write in the state symbols. Because this is an ionic equation, you must include in the state symbols. H plus is from H2SO4. H2SO4 is in the aqueous state. Magnesium is a metal solid state. Magnesium sulfate is an ionic compound in aqueous state. And hydrogen is a gas. So this is the ionic equation for an acid metal reaction. All right, let's try one more. Let's have a precipitation reaction. So if I have AgNO3, silver nitrate, which is an aqueous solution, I add this to HCl, and again an aqueous solution, I will have AgCl, which is a solid, this is the precipitate, plus HNO3. So again, front takes the back, and the back takes the front. So I have this. So second step, I will split this into ions. Aqueous means I can split into ions. Ag plus NO3 minus. Aqueous, H plus Cl minus. Solid, I can't do anything about this. It can't split into its ions. Even though it is an ionic compound because it is not soluble in water. HNO3 aqueous can be split into its ions. Cancelling out the like ions on both sides. NO3 minus. H plus. I am simply left with Ag plus equal state, equal state plus Cl minus again equal state giving me my AgCl which is the solid precipitate. So this is the ionic equation for the precipitation reaction between silver nitrate and dilute hydrochloric acid. Okay now maybe you should go about trying the Trying to write the ionic equation for reaction between an acid and a carbonate, let's say H2SO4 plus Na2CO3. Okay, what would be the ionic equation for this chemical reaction? You can pause the video here to try. Continue the video when you are done. Okay, you will actually get Na2SO4 as a salt plus water plus carbon dioxide check to make sure it's balanced. The ionic equation you will get is simply H plus plus CO3 2 minus giving you CO2 plus H2O. Liquid state, gas, aqueous and 